Hi, I'm Adam Lane Smith, an attachment specialist. And one of the biggest questions I get is how to unattach from people. Because sometimes people form relationships and bonds in ways that they don't like. Sometimes a relationship ends and they can't let it go. This happens a lot, especially with men, I've noticed. I get this question a lot from men. How do I unattach from somebody that I no longer want to be connected to? I can't stop thinking about her. I hear that a lot. Today, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to teach you because there's a couple key factors that are keeping people attached even after that relationship has ended. Well, number one, there's a big piece about brain associations. We're going to get to that here in a moment, where you've connected them into the different parts of your brain. But even to get there, we need to understand something called a scarcity mindset. The scarcity mindset, there's a lot of people that are smarter than I talking about this, but just a quick breakdown. The scarcity mindset is opposed to the surplus mindset, which says this, either your environment is scarce in resources or your environment is abundant in resources, an abundance mindset, a surplus mindset. Either there's a ton in your environment, you have all kinds of stuff and you don't have to squabble and fight over resources or there's nothing <laughs> and you have to fight, fight to the na- fight tooth and claw and to the death over every little scrap and hold on to what little you have. I hear that a lot, that difference. Like, I I can't let go of this relationship because what else is there? This is called a scarcity mindset, and this can come from a couple of places. If you, in your childhood, had low connections with dopamine, if your attachment is weak, if your family didn't hold you and care for you in the right way, not a lot of physical affection, uh, they didn't compliment you and care for you, if you didn't have a ton of dopamine, it starts to change how your brain bonds to other people. So your brain may shift and have more vasopressin receptors, which means you bond better through stress. You bond better through doing things together. You bond better through solving problems together. It's harder to bond with with oxytocin. Um, Not just dopamine, but oxytocin also. Um, If your brain has had very little dopamine and or oxytocin, your brain starts to not prioritize those as much. And then when it gets them, it really prioritizes them <laughs> when you, when you oxytocin bond with people. Uh, um, I should have said that more than dopamine at the beginning. When you oxytocin bond with someone, especially for the first time, your brain says, what is this feeling? This is weird. Where is this coming from? Oh, I've never experienced this before. And it really likes it because it's natural for us to oxytocin bond with people and to get floods of dopamine and to feel great and to enjoy those bonds and those connections. It's normal for us to have that. Our brain really likes it. And then our brain gets scared. And our brain says, I've never felt this with anybody ever before. You've probably heard that before. Maybe you've said that before. I've never felt this with anybody else before. So I never will again. That's the second half of that statement that is left unsaid. So I never will again. That is a big key factor in why people's can't, people can't get over somebody. Not even just a romantic or sexual partner, but a friendship, a job, whatever it might be. Why can't I unattach from this thing? It made me feel a little bit happy at one point, and I've never felt that anywhere else, so I don't think I ever will. Yes, it turned horrible, and that person tried to stab me, and they, she ran me over with her car and burned down my house and stole my dog. But I remember that one week where we were really happy 10 years ago, and I can't let go. <laughs> I hear that. That sounds terrible. That sounds terrible. And that is still an actual example of someone I know. Someone I've talked to, someone I've worked with in the past, treated Many, many times men are horrifically mistreated by women and women are horrifically mistreated by men and can't let them go. Scarcity. There is nobody else who will love me. There was nobody else who will give me oxytocin. There's nobody else who will give me dopamine. Nobody else because I don't deserve it. Because nobody else in this world will do that for me. Because nobody cares. Because nobody can. Because that's just not how the world works. Whatever the answer is, I have to hold on to this because there will never be anything like it ever. And that keeps us shackled. There's also those brain associations. And that's a big piece of it is anything good is now associated with that person, your favorite things that you did. Of course, you shared them with that person. 
Now, every time you do them, they're poisoned. You think about that person. Then you stop doing the things you enjoy. Then your dopamine plummets even worse. Then all you can really think about is that person and how much you want to be around that person again, even though she stabbed you. Again, real example. I wish it wasn't. The key is a couple of things. Number one, learning. Learning that love and oxytocin and dopamine are not scarce. You can get them from so many people. Fixing your attachment is a big piece of this. Fixing your attachment so that you can actually intentionally build oxytocin bonds with other people instead of just stress vasopressin bonds. And also building vasopressin bonds with other people. Building connections and attachments with other people. This doesn't mean you run out and have sex with 10 people to try to get over one person you had sex with. It means building real, deep, lasting connections with other people, especially in non-sexual ways, so that your mind and body and heart and soul are fulfilled in those relationships. And your brain says, aha, it wasn't just that one person. It wasn't just a weird accident and a fluke that that person had the magic power to make me feel loved. I can do it on purpose, and I can find more people who do it big piece, really big piece, fixing attachment. People who are stuck, it's often fixing attachment. The second piece is grieving. You've lost that person. It's like a death. And it's the death of somebody who gave you something nobody else ever had, or very few people have. It's a death. You must grieve it properly. Now, a lot of relationships break up in complicated ways. And the, hard, the harder it feels, and the worse it feels, and the worse it, 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 it can feel like a death. And it can feel like a complicated death. And there's very little closure. It's, hey, I did something they don't like. They blocked me and I never get to speak to them again. I don't even get to explain it. Maybe we could fix it, but they're not willing to even talk about it. Complicated grief. Closure. Learning to reach closure with it. I don't understand what happened, but I'm going to have to accept it. And here's how I make sure it doesn't exactly happen like that again. Here's what I'm going to do about it. Dealing with it like a trauma, like a grief, like a death. Processing it. You need to grieve it out process it and learn the lessons from it and then know how to apply those lessons to your life. So your life gets better, safer. It doesn't happen again. Your brain doesn't freak out. That's a big piece of it too. And then doing the things you did with that person that are now ruined, your favorite things, doing them again with somebody else, not just by yourself. I mean, you can, and that's a piece of it, but doing them with other people too, doing them multiple times. So your brain relearns old associations and unlearns the, the, the association with that person. Watching your favorite movie over and over by yourself. Watching your favorite movie over and over with your best friend five times. Hey, I really love this movie. Could we just sit and watch this movie five times? I will pay you money. No, <laughs> I, I, will, I will do something for you, but I really need you to come sit with me today and do this because I want to enjoy this movie again and rewire my associations. And they'll say, what the heck is an association? That's a connection your brain has made between two things. It associates one with the other. Redefining your associations, fixing your attachment to fix your scarcity mindset and building those connections with other people so that your brain has that and fixing your grief process and processing out what it is. I have another video on complicated grief. This probably could be useful for watching in, in, in a relationship too, not just with grief and death. All of that is how you unattach, unattach from somebody you do not want in your life. Now, again, I want to hammer this home. It is not about going out and I can't get over this girl. I can't get over this guy. So I need to have sex with 10 people and that will make it better. No, it won't. Because it's not necessarily just the sex that your brain is wanting. Your brain got oxytocin from that person. Your brain got dopamine in an oxytocin setting from that person. Your brain felt connected to that person. Meaningless non-connection will not fix it. It will just make you more miserable. That won't work. Building meaningful bonds with two or three other people in your life. That's what will fix it. In that way, treat being stuck on somebody especially somebody who's hurt you and is bad for you, treat being stuck on them as a red flag that you need to build deeper connections with people. If you are that desperate that one person has left your life and you feel that there is nothing left and never will be anything left ever again without them, man, that doesn't say much about your quality of life. It doesn't say much about your confidence in building a better life. It doesn't say much about how you feel about your life. It sounds like you live a life that you hate without that person and you're willing to put up with anything just to have them back just to feel for a moment that you're connected to them that's usually where that's at that's usually where that comes from 
every person is unique and important. But you can build good lifelong connections and a meaningful life without anybody. The quality of your life is not dependent on any other human being on this earth being in your life. It's dependent on you and forging new connections with people. People die. Unfortunately, people die. You could get attached with that person and have a perfect life and then they could die and you would still have to live without them. So the answer is not to have them in your life or die yourself. The answer is to build meaningful connections in a life that you value. That's really the answer here. It's a red flag when you want to unattach from somebody and can't. It's a red flag that you haven't built the lasting connections with other people that would fulfill you and allow you to move gracefully out of that relationship. Treat it as a red flag. Treat it as an opportunity to get better. Treat it as an opportunity to live the life you want to live and should be living anyway, but don't know how. Watch my other videos. Here's how to fix your attachment. I, I've got a $5 book on Amazon, Slaying Your Fear, How to Fix Your Attachment. I'm putting out a course soon. There's all kinds of ways to get better and better and better and better. Do those. Do those things and make your life better and you will get over that person because you will build lasting bonds that deeply fulfill you in better ways than that person ever did. That's how you unattach from somebody. That's the answer. Please do it. If you have any comments, any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Like, comment, subscribe, help boost the channel, help more people unattach from the people and things that they don't want to be connected to. It really helps me. Helps spread the word. Helps, help, helps everybody out, hopefully. Thank you for watching. Until next time.